Hello everyone, we are doing module 8 on synchronization. This is lecture number 3 where we are going to discuss other synchronization options. In the previous lectures, we have looked at uninterruptible instructions, how they work and how they are implemented. And there were two other types of synchronizations called the point to point and barrier synchronization, which we are going to discuss in this lecture. Okay, so point to point event synchronization. So what is this? Uh, you have two processes executing and one process wants to change some variables and these changed values are to be used by the other process. For example, in a producer consumer type of a scenario where the producer process generates uh, newer variables and when the variable is generated, that value has to be used by the consumer process. So, how do these processes communicate with each other telling that I have completed the production of the variable and the consumer can now use that variable. So, this is established using point to point event synchronization. So, when the producer process arrives at a point where it has finished the production, it sends an event to the other process kind of triggering that process to consume that variable. So, this is normally established using either busy waiting that is the consumer process keeps on waiting on for example a flag okay so the producer produces a variable sets a flag and the consumer waits for this flag to become one when the flag becomes one it consumes the data item so we can use a flag where the consumer goes into a busy waiting state if you do not want to execute busy waiting because that's going to consume unnecessary uh, processor power, you can use semaphores which are normally used in operating systems or concurrent parallel programming scenarios. Okay? So, semaphores are also similar or they fall under the same class of point to point synchronization. So, they can be implemented using busy waiting onto flags or if we want to implement blocking instead of busy waiting that is the process is blocked moved out of the processor and uh, it waits for being triggered in future. So, we can use semaphores for doing that. Okay. Uh, this can be implemented both using hardware as well as software algorithms. The software algorithm for point to point. So, this very familiar example which we uh, saw in the memory consistency module where P1 is the producer process, P2 is the consumer process. So, P1 is going to generate the value of A and P2 is going to consume the value of A. We want that the value produced by P1 is the one used. Okay? So, this is the transfer the, or the link between P1 and P2. Hence, we also discussed should we reorder and this would create problems for consistency or the programmer's intuition behind the program when we were discussing memory consistency. So, well right now we are uh, considering that when P1 produces A, only then P2 should start consuming. Hence, we use this flag variable. So, this flag is used as a control variable which is used to communicate values between the two processes and it is not used for data transfer. So, I am not going to transfer any values, I am just going to trigger uh, P1 and P2 accordingly. Okay, So, this is how the flag variable will be useful. Uh, we can modify this program slightly given that we know A was initially 0. Suppose you know that A was initially 0 in both P1 and P2 and P1 is going to generate a non-zero value for A. So, what could P2 do? P2 can simply spin on A. right? So, I can use A as the synchronization uh, flag variable as well as the data variable if I know that A was equal to 0. So, this I can do provided A is equal to 0 to begin with. Okay, So, initially A is equal to 0 then you could do this because then P2 will wait for the uh, A's value to become non-zero and then consume it. So, this is uh, very simple a software algorithm for establishing point to point synchronization. Okay, how do you do this in hardware? So, in hardware we need to somehow establish connection between P1 and P2. So, P1 and P2 now in the software that is this assembly program P1 makes the flag 1 and P2 keeps uh, checking for it. To do the same thing in hardware the flag variable or the A variable for um, which we are considering right now. So, that variable is all that I have because there is no concept of two processes. Hardware only sees memory items and instructions. So, we can use the storage or the memory and attach extra bits to the variables. 
and this extra bit will be called the full and empty bit. The when the producer when initially the variable is declared to be empty because the producer has not produced the variable. When the producer produces the variable that, that is when a write happens to A, we set the bit to full. Okay. So, in this example when P1 executes A equal to f of x, that time when a write happens to A, we make the bit equal to full. Later when the consumer goes and reads the data item it sets the bit to empty. Okay. So, what should the consumer do? The consumer process essentially goes and checks whether the bit is full. Okay. So, if the bit is empty, the data is not available. If the bit is full, then the data is ready to be read. And you can guarantee atomicity that is exactly one process should be able to change the value of the bit to full and empty. Okay. So, here the program becomes simple as this. You change A and you consume A. So, how is it going to work? I will have a data structure or within the storage there are several uh, variables A, B, C, D many variables are there. I am only interested in the variable A. So, when process P1 executes and it uh, makes A equal to f of x it sets the full bit to 1. Okay? So, full empty bit becomes 1. Initially it was 0 because there was nothing there. Once P1 executes it makes this bit 1 and now P2 has to wait until that bit becomes 1. So, P2 will keep the keep checking for that bit and later when P2 sees the bit equal to 1, it consumes the variable A and then resets the bit. So, it makes this bit 0 after using the variable. What is the effect of this? Once P2 makes this bit 0, P1 can again produce another variable if uh, the program proceeds in a similar manner. Okay. So, this is a good idea, but it was not used in commercial machines because it is uh, complex to implement and less flexible. So, why is it complex and why is it difficult to implement? One is that if I have a single producer and multiple consumers, okay. So, here uh, I am assuming I have one single bit full and empty. When that bit is 0, data is not available, bit is 1, producer has produced the data consumer checks the bit consumes the value. If there are multiple consumers, how will you use a single bit to address that? Okay. So, it becomes uh, difficult to handle for example, a single bit becomes difficult to handle for single producer and multiple consumers. If we want the producer to update the variable several times before telling the consumer that is uh, the producer wrote the value of A it executed a equal to f of x, but it again wants to do a equal to something, it again wants to do a equal to something. So, multiple updates to a happen before it gives control to p2. So, this cannot be done because the first time p1 does a write to a, the bit is going to become 1. Okay? So, multiple updates on the variable before the consumer can use it is not possible in this uh, idea. Again, uh, I have a full empty bit associated with every data item. Okay, every instruction is going to do read and write to all the data items. So, here uh, this is the data item of my interest. So, I am going to use the full empty bit, but these 1, 2 and 3, these are normal variables. Okay, So, they are normal variables used by other processes and not involved in the synchronization or producer consumer concept, but they also carry the baggage of the full and empty bit. So, should I always use the full and empty for all possible read write instructions because the bit is there. So, if I use for all instructions unnecessarily I am creating performance bottlenecks by doing one extra update of the bit. Okay, So, you would say well do not do it for all variables, do it only for the special variables. That is I will only do this for the variable A and not for B, C, D. But when I do it for this particular instruction, when I do it for this A equal to f of x, I need to remember that this A is a special variable and hence I need special instructions to do this. Okay? So, I would need a special instruction to identify such and therefore, it will need help from the compiler as well as the programming language. So, because of these several uh, challenges, and the cost associated this particular idea is not very popular. Okay? So, that is how point to point synchronization is done in software as well as hardware. Uh, the third idea of synchronization is barrier synchronization. So, barrier synchronization is done when multiple processes execute a part of the code and when they finish a first phase of execution they want to join 
that is they finish executions together and then they can start with the next phase of execution. So barriers are used in such scenarios. So we will see how a barrier looks like and how can we implement it. Okay. So here I have got four processes P1 to P4 and it is a long process but only thing is this picture is showing a phase of execution. Once this phase finishes we insert a barrier sync between them. So this barrier synchronization says that all of them should finish. When all of them finish only then they can continue with their remaining portion. So P1 can do its remaining part only after the barrier has been established. So P2 also has to wait. So all the remaining portions of these processes will execute only after the barrier has completed. So that is the idea of a global uh, barrier event synchronization. So how do you implement this? So this is a centralized software barrier where I am going to use a counter and a flag for doing its implementation. Okay. So if you look at this picture, the pink barrier that is the thing we are uh, concentrating on implementation. How do I know that all the processes have finished? So that we can trigger them to continue with their part 2. Okay. So this is I can say this is phase 1 of every process and this is phase 2. So once phase 1 of everybody finishes only then phase 2 of others can begin. So essentially here I need to know the count that is how many processes have finished of okay and when I am updating this count for example I will keep a count variable inside this pink box every time a process finishes it will come and increment this count. So count is initially 0, when P1 finishes it makes the count 1, P2 finishes makes count 2 and so on. So we have to keep waiting until the count becomes 4. So this is fine. However, the count variable is a single variable. Again, you have to use the uh, uninterruptible atomic instructions to modify that as part of a critical section. The count variable will be updated by multiple processes, hence they need to acquire permission on this count variable. So, we need a lock variable also. So, first acquire a lock and then do a count plus plus and then release the lock. So, inside this pink box I have a count variable, every process increments it and to increment it acquires a lock and it releases the lock. All right. Now, P1 suppose it came first, it incremented the counter value from 0 to 1 and uh, how should P1 know? that others have finished because they do not communicate with each other directly. So P1 is now waiting. So this one waits here, P2 also keeps waiting because others are yet to finish. So when P4 finishes finally, it is the job of the last process to wake up these others and say that hey everybody has finished, now you can go with your phase 2. So in the meanwhile, so when others are executing, so P1 has to wait for others to finish. So how is it going to wait? Every wait is implemented using a busy loop. So busy waiting on something. So when you do busy waiting for example on a flag variable. So you will say okay I will wait on this flag variable and uh, until this flag variable is 0 I will keep sleeping. Once the flag becomes 1 I will understand everybody has finished and then I can start with my phase 2. So that is the overall idea of how the barrier gets implemented. So I have a shared counter to maintain the number of processes that arrived at the barrier, arriving at the barrier. Each arriving process is going to increment the count and the increment should happen mutually exclusive. Hence we need the critical section uh, idea for changing the counter. Okay, so now counts have increased and if the count has reached P which is the total number of processes then we can say this is the last process. And if you are not the last process, then you keep busy waiting on a flag variable. The last process will remove this busy waiting and then wake up all the other processes. Okay. So I have this counter which keeps track of the arrived processes. I have the flag for busy waiting. So the first process makes the flag 0. Okay. So when P1, suppose P1 comes first, it will make the flag variable to 0 and it P1 itself keeps busy waiting to until the flag becomes 1. So P1 will go to sleep and say that hey when flag becomes 1 I will know that barrier has completed. The last process which comes to this uh, barrier 
will understand that because of me others are uh, busy waiting or sleeping so I need to wake them up, I need to release them. Hence the last process makes the flag equal to 1 and when flag becomes 1 the other processes will come out of their busy loop. Okay? So overall if the count is less than p when we increment our counter if it is not p you have to go into busy wait. If the count is p then the last process has arrived and it has to release all the other processes. Okay, so, with this understanding of how the barrier works, now we will uh, see some pseudo code to implement this. Okay, so, this barrier is implemented using a uh, structure. So, I am saying that my barrier name is the structure I am going to use. What should this structure contain? It should contain the counter. Okay, so, we are discussing the same variables here. We have the counter, the flag, okay, two things. And remember, that flag will be used for busy wait that is every process is going to read the flag so no problem but counter has to be changed by every process hence you would need to acquire a lock to change the counter variable in a mutually exclusive manner so for changing the counter i need a lock variable okay so that's the lock variable so you have the counter to change the counter you need a lock variable and we have the flag on which i'm going to do the spinning all right so we have to initialize the barrier by uh, resetting the lock so this will make the lock equal to 0 and uh, make the counter equal to 0 okay so make the counter to 0 when we begin and the lock is available okay so this gray box is showing the code of the barrier for a process p so this is the current process so within the process we have uh, declared a variable called count because i'm going to increment the count so i need to increment the count of the barrier bar named uh, dot counter plus plus so increment the counter this is the counter inside the barrier so when i finish my work i execute the barrier process i have to go and increment the counter telling that i have finished so before i can do counter plus plus we need to obtain exclusive access to this counter variable through the lock so we execute the lock to get exclusive access to this so this is the pink portion sorry the blue portion is the critical section so once i acquire the lock i'm going to do counter plus plus but if the counter is zero i am the first process reaching to this barrier so when i am the first process i have some extra job to do what is my job i need to make the flag equal to zero okay so every time you have to reset the flag and update the counter Flag will be made zero only by the first arriving process. Every other process is simply going to increment the counter. So end of this blue part of the code, I have incremented the counter. Now we have to check whether we are the uh, intermediate process or the last process. If I am the first or any other process, I am not the last process. So what should I do? I have to keep waiting for the others. So how long will I wait? I will wait until the flag was 0. So keep waiting until the flag is 0. Eventually the last process is going to make flag 1 and I will come out of this busy wait. Okay, so that green portion is for processes which come early and the pink portion so let me say this, these are early arrivers. So if a process arrives early it is going to go in busy wait and this is the last arrival. So this is the process which came in the end. So the process which comes in the end, how will it know it, has, it is the last one? By comparing the count. So when we incremented the count and you check whether your count is equal to, well this, uh, yeah, is equal to P where P is the, sorry, this P is the total number of processes and not the process ID. So that is the total number of processes. Okay, so I'm going to compare that my count with P. If it is P, it means that I am the last one to arrive. And when I am the last one to arrive, what should I do? I have to wake up all the others, the, the ones in the green color who are in busy wait. How do I wake them up? By making the flag equal to 1. So once I make flag equal to 1, all the green processes which who are sleeping, they will be woken up. And we have an extra task of resetting the counter because we are the last process. Okay. So once the barrier has completed its task, reset the counter to Zero. So if you see here the last process in the pink color code is resetting the counter but it makes the flag equal to 1. Why does it make the flag 1? To 
I would say this does it to wake up others from the busy way. Right? So, it is going to wake up the others. End of this, what will be the value of flag? Flag will be 1. So, in future, if you are executing the barrier once more, the flag has to be reset and that is the reason why we make the flag equal to 0 in this blue portion for the first arriving process. Okay? So, so that is how a barrier gets implemented. Uh, another cleaner slide with the same code is shown here. Okay. So, this is how barrier uh, synchronization can be established. Definitely these are uh, one example, but there are multiple other types of implementations, more advanced type of lock algorithms do exist. But uh, this module has given you a flavor of how these synchronization constructs can be implemented in software as well as hardware. Okay, so, with this we finish the module on synchronization. Thank you so much.